this is SPX 2015. I'm Joe. I'm Rusty. And we have with us, go John ahead. John D. Roberts. John Roberts and? Chip Mosier. I'm the VP of Communications Marketing at Comixology. Comixology. This guy's co-founder and director of Comixology Submit. Nice. Got a hype right. man. For the viewers <laughs> at home, tell us, guys, what brings you to SPX? Great comics. A great answer. <laughs> Uh, SPX is an amazing show. Uh, I mean, I just love coming here and seeing all the great people, the great works that are out there. Um, you know, last night at the Ignatz Award, being able to see all the stuff, the amazing stuff that won, and it was really cool. So you um, help the creators that are here, give them information about how they can be a part of Comixology? Yeah, so <coughs> Comixology, if you don't know, is the, it's the premier online uh, digital platform for reading comics. Um, you know, we, not only do we have comics from you know, publishers like Marvel and DC, we also have, what we, we launched Fanagraphics, we launched um, Drawn and Quarterly, Drawn and this, quarterly week. this week. Yes, we have an SPX sale going on right now. Yep. Um, we're very, I mean, the thing about us, I would say is that we love comics and we love working with, with car cartoonists and creators and we love just being able to put their comics out there and showing them, getting them in front of as many people as possible. Yeah, we, you know, it's our belief that there's a comic out there for everybody and, and part of that is having the most diverse yep. uh, selection of comics available mm -hmm. and so you know, whether that means we have comics from Marvel, DC, Fantagraphics, Drawn and Corley or Retrofit Right. Oily, you know, we want to make sure that we have the uh, widest and most diverse selection around. So, at, at the beginning, when you were getting more involved with smaller like creators and publishers, did you have people coming to you looking for an outlet, or were you just re reaching out to people to try and bring people in? I, a mixture of the two, mm -hmm. right? You know, I mean, when you start, when you start the business, you're out there trying to get as many people on as possible, and that was actually one of the really cool things like right in the beginning was that we actually reached out to the people that we really wanted to work with. So like uh, I got to reach out to Mark, Mike Allred who does Mad Men, who's like a, one of my favorites, and say, hey, we've got this great technology. We want you to be on it. And then we were also reaching out to friends. You know, um, I've been in the, in the comic community for a lot longer than I care to admit. So being able to reach out to my friends who do the stuff and say, hey, you really need to be on here. And then once people started seeing what we were doing, they started coming to us and saying, hey, I want to be on there. Like, how do I do that? And then at a certain point, you know, we hit this tipping point with, uh, with getting Marvel and DC on board. And then we had a problem where we didn't have a lot of the bandwidth to get yep. some of the smaller guys oh, yeah. on board uh, and on the platform. So, uh, you know, John and his team uh, came up with Comixology Submit uh, which is our self-publishing platform. So you just go to submit.comixology.com. You uh, fill out a form. There's a click-through contract. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a, a, it's a very easy agreement. It's a 50-50 profit, profit split. Uh, Five-year, non-exclusive. We take no rights, nothing. Yep. And, um, and, you know, uh, unlike other platforms, it's curated. So we make sure that the quality is high because we we promote the submit brand yep. to our customers. Uh, and the and the content that that comes under uh, uh, comes under that shingle and and so it takes a little bit of time uh, for the books to come up and then we we do the guided view which is our reading technology which lets you uh, read comics on small mobile devices like the iPhone and uh, and it's been it's been really great we've been sponsoring the Ignatz Awards for this is our third year mm -hmm. and uh, and we've really built the profile uh, up of a uh, uh, of a lot of the small press uh, publishers that come here, like Oily and Retrofit, and then Monica Gallagher's on. Uh, Monica Gallagher, on, um, Spike Fox Troutman, Brown, Spike Troutman, and Chuck Forsman. Yeah, Warren Craghead. So, have you found that there is a challenge with the curation because it's not you're not just accepting things to have them part of a catalog. When you accept them, you're planning to promote them to a certain yeah. degree. And so you have to take some care with, you know, including somebody in because it's not just them being a part of a searching search index. You know, you're gonna you're gonna help them. You're gonna help them along. Yeah, that you know that we take the responsibility of 
you know, of these people's work very seriously, which is why part of the, you know, it is a curated process. So we do look at things like, we want to make sure that the books look amazing. So if, if a book has artifacting or pixelation or any issues in it, we're going to reach out to the creators and say, look, you know, we need to fix this because we want to make sure that we, when we present your work, we're doing it in the best way possible. Um, because it's not really a good thing for them to have their work look bad. It's not good for us. And it's definitely not good for our consumers. So it's like we want to make sure that the experience is the best possible, which, you know, can take a little while. Uh, sure. You know, but I mean, the idea is that, you know, we're the caretakers of your work. That's an awesome responsibility. And it's one that we don't take lightly. Did you find a great deal of difficulty in work going from working with publishers, large and small, to working with a bunch of individual publishers. Basically, everybody's a publisher. Yeah. 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 I would imagine yeah. so. Yeah. Because it's one thing if you're dealing with a, with a brand that houses a lot of titles within it, then it's you know you only have to make a certain level of agreement with the top level of that, and everything else falls in line. But eventually, if it's just one person, one book, one person, one book. Yeah. You know, you have to deal with all these individual publishers. Yeah, I mean, we've tried to automate the process as much as possible, yep. but we still do a lot of personal one-on-one -on -one hand holding. Um, you know, the great thing about submit those, you know, we do a lot of promotion. Yep. If you go to comicsology.com, uh, you'll notice on the on the top navigation bar, you know, we have a we have a button for Marvel, we have a B button for DC, and then we have a button for submit. And so you click that button, and then there's all the submit titles. Yep. Every week we feature. Uh, a title from Submit. We send out review copies to our large press list. Yep. Uh, so we're aggressively getting reviews. We're constantly and, uh, uh, doing promotions, putting, like this weekend we have a, an SBX theme, themed sale where we're focusing on Submit titles from indie cartoonists and creators. Uh, you know, Chuck Forsman's in there, Spike Troutman's in there. You know, really to get as much attention possible on these amazing works because, I mean, again, it's we're passionate about this stuff. Like. We really want people to read this stuff, and we want to be able to, like Chip said earlier, the goal is if there's a comic out there that we think you're going to like, we want you to find it. And so everything is working backwards towards that. And it's, it's a cool combination that you guys have of kind of like promoting inward and outward because you, you do the comicsology sale, and that it brings more attention outside yep. to the indie books. And then with things like the Ignats and, and doing promotion here, it, it puts you on the radar of the creators here so that they can get into the submit. Yeah. In a way, it reminds me of someone maybe publishing a first comic for the first time with a traditional publisher, and that that first publisher they work with is going to do a lot of hand-holding, a lot of explaining of what you know the measurements need to be, things like that. <laughs> and you know, you guys, because of the submit process, you kind of offer an opportunity for anyone, to a certain degree, to learn about this process, even if they don't make it the first time, even if their book's not selected, they still get to go through something that will help them down the line. Yeah, and, and you know, in a lot of these cases, um, our feedback might be the first feedback and only feedback that, that they've ever gotten. Well, yeah. comics can be so isolating like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, and, and so like, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that want to make comics that don't necessarily understand the production and aspects of it, of like, you know, file sizes, DPI, resolution, CMYK versus RGB. Lettering in Microsoft Word. Ma lettering, really yes. The best thing Comic to do. Sans. We, you know. We've totally done Yeah, well, I do some Microsoft graphic Word. design for my job, and I don't need to see your photos embedded in Word, Microsoft Word. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, working with creators, you know, trying to get information out there on, like, this is how other people in the industry do it. This is, like, you know, if you're going to want to take it to a, public, uh, to a printer, to get a, a printed edition, you know, these are the things that you, you need to include. Crop marks, printer marks, you need to leave a bleed, you know, you need to consider all of these aspects. And so not only are we like trying to get, trying to fill Comixology with as many great indie comics, we're also trying to help people create the best comics possible so that not, like after their experience, I mean, we, I had one cartoonist reach out and say that after she went through the process of making a PDF for us, she was able to take that PDF and go straight to the printer. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 That's one of the cool things about, you know, it's growing what you're trying to do, even if it's just as far as working with comicsology, you know, which it seems like a relatively small step, but it can actually be a great boon 
for reasons such as that, in addition to getting your book for sale. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, if you're doing a mini comic and you're, you know, do a run of a hundred or two hundred for SBX, you know, if you also have that on Comicsology, you know, you have the ability to sell a lot more without without. A, without that much capital costs invested right. in, in production. Because especially for like indie creators, yeah, they don't sure. have that you know, yeah. nest egg to sit on. And, and also the many outlets. Yeah. Because yeah. your book's not necessarily going to be carried by a lot of stores. <clears throat> so the shows like this are maybe your primary way of selling. This gives a way to sh extend the convention out. People Internationally. Interna I mean, we're, we're an international platform. Yeah. Right. So, you know, you're international day one. So if I'm someone, you know, sitting in a, you know, Germany, whatever, and I'm reading articles about SPX, I can immediately go to Comixology, find your book and read it, and feel that I'm part of the same community that everyone else here is in. Now, you mentioned a lot of technical challenges that might you might encounter with people that are early on in their publishing process. Uh, do you ever find any type of content issues where it's, you know, maybe it's a little violent, a little salacious, things like that, where you might want to push back or offer advice in that direction? or? Is you kind of hands off with that? We're not, I mean, we don't offer a lot of editorial advice. Um, I mean, there have been on some rare occasions where, uh, you know, we've advised that, you know, someone should maybe seek out an editor to help them craft the story because, you know, I mean, this is, the, they're new to it, right? right? You know, they, you know, and, and I think it was uh, Robert Kirkman said that the, Robert Kirkman from The Walking Dead said that the best thing that he ever did was to hire an editor for his book. So it's like, you know, we've had a lot of great works that come in that have spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes. And, and it's like, so we'll say to them, look, we like what you're doing here. It's just not ready. You know, why, you know, if you were to someone like an editor or something, they would really help you clean this up and do some amazing stuff with it. But we don't really say, no, you shouldn't use, you know, this word or, we, or you shouldn't sure, do this, yeah. you know. It's not necessarily you're like not a content, content editor. Yeah, yeah, really. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, have you found any benefits that were unexpected from kind of ingraining yourself in the SPX community, you know, sponsoring the Ignats, making it a point to reach out to these types of creators? Have you experienced anything that, you know, you didn't expect from it? Any opportunities? Maybe working with creators early on that you might not have been aware of? You know, there, there have been a couple of occasions where, um, you know, I think a, a lot of... It, it's kind of nice. Some of the efforts that we've had have led to larger things, right? Um, you know, and, and how success is measured it can be done different ways. So we have a, a creator, Fabian Ranghill Jr. He does a book called Doc Unknown. Yes, he, just, he does. He just put it up on on um, on Comicsology, you know, and we saw it and we're like, this is actually pretty good. I like this. So we started promoting it, and as as a result of being on Comicsology, he was able to fund three successive Kickstarters. He's now doing work for Black Mask with uh, Alexis Zerti. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. For Space Riders. Yeah. We, we got to talk with them. They're, they're great guys, and that yeah. book is so cool. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there have been a lot of really great instances like that where, thanks to the exposure on Comixology, it's led to them doing other work. Um, Alex DeCampi is another one where, you know, she's really blowing up right now, and she's, you know, really early on, she was one of the first independent creators that we worked with who created content specifically for Comixology. And now she's writing uh, for uh, Dark Horse, she's writing for Dynamite. Um, you know, like an image book right now. Image too. book, yeah. So those stories are, are some of my favorite when we like, you know, when we recognize that this is gonna be amazing and we really promote the, the heck out of it, and then that helps propel them to do other things. It's kind of funny because then you can kind of follow a creator through all these different avenues and levels within your business. You know, the independent self-publisher, then the bigger publishers, and then the top, top shelf publishers that yep. you work with. Do you kind of see this, maybe people yeah. filter upward? Yeah, it's like, look at, you know, Ed Brubaker used to be very active at SBX in the 90s. Yes, he did. You know, and, and he's had a he's had a very interesting career trajectory. Yes. I think a lot of his current fans realize, you know, where exactly he came from with uh, uh, Low Life. Such a good great book. book. Like he was at TCAF recently. And yeah, there you know, there were a lot of people online with like Winter Soldier books and things like that. And I brought a couple of Low Life issues and he's like, oh my God, like don't show this to anybody. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But they were great. 
Yeah, I mean, when I met when I met Ed, you know, I was hanging out with Jason Lutz and Megan Kelso and John Lewis, and you know, back in the mid '90s, and you know, they were all like just the young guns of the time, and um, yeah, it's just great to be able to support. Uh, all aspects of the of the comic book industry, yeah. you know, whether it's uh, small press, uh, mini comics, uh, to self-published graphic novels, to some of the smaller uh, smaller uh, uh, con- micro press, which I, I don't really understand what that means, but <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> they're just really small presses. Yeah, nice. I, and then and then uh, you know all the way up to Marvel and DC, and they have it all in one place for people to discover. When I yeah. worked, you know. When I was a kid and worked in a comic shop, I, I read very wide and deeply. You know, like, you know, I was reading X Men and Lloyd Llewellyn and Cerebus and Teen Titans. I, I mean, I read all over the place, and I, I don't understand. I never understood people that just read. You we know, were fortunate yeah. that because we've known each other for years and years, yeah. and we had a comic store that allowed us that opportunity. Yeah, like right? everything was cr- treated as equal possible yeah. entertainment. Yeah. And so, same thing. We don't understand how people segregate and, stuff like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, they would have, like, all the Marvel stuff, all the DC stuff, and, and we read that, and it was fun. And then, at the same time, they would promote SPX, and that's how yeah. we found out about the show, like, 20 years ago. So, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, the, there's just some... I mean, just the, the uh, freedom of self-expression that a lot of the yeah. artists and cartoonists in there have, you know, doing these mini-comics. It's just, like, from their head onto the paper onto the Xerox machine into your yeah. hand. I mean there's not really there's not really any medium that 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 that's a storytelling medium that that's that immediate. And then being able to have a platform where we can take that self expression and deliver it internationally. Make it broad. Uh, take is, such a small idea and yeah. just Broadcasted it's everywhere. pretty fantastic. It is uh, it is kind of scary to think that uh, we've been going to SPX shows for 20 years. Oh yeah, we we yeah. talked about it a few. Yeah, times. it's not yeah, cool to like, think about that. Yeah, Oof. yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I remember uh, the the first SPX I went to, which was about 20 years ago, going to a digital comics panel with Scott McCloud. I was there. Yeah. Yes, we talked I was about there. that a few One times. One of our yeah. friends got into a semi argument with him over the uh, the realities of uh, digital paper. Yeah. Yeah, and we're like, oh, this is awkward because we know that guy, and he's just yeah. giving Scott he was like, a hard time. I still want to roll comics up and put them in my pocket. And Scott was like, well, with digital paper, you can roll that and put it in your pocket. <laughs> so. Now, before we let you go, guys, would you like to answer some mystery questions? Sure. All right. All right. Do we have to pay? Do we no. have to put money in? No, quarters are provided. Quarters are oh, provided. quarters are provided. It's like the best arcade. All right. I don't know, John. I think you're going first. Uh, you're a co founder. See, I told you, best hype man in the business. And what's your question? Parades, by losers or for losers? Hmm. Obviously, the writer of this question is taking a strong stance strong on parades. Yes. Parade stance. Someone does not appreciate parades. Um, I don't know. Parades are one of those things that we've just been doing for years and years and years. And, you know, it's, it's I don't know. I remember when parades first came up, you know, like last decade. It was like the hip thing to do. Yeah, man. I liked it when it was small. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, Yeah, it's such a sellout now. Yeah. Yeah, it's so mainstream. It's all corporate. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. totally. Yeah. You know, Macy's took one over recently. Oh, God. It's like a parade on every corner now, like Starbucks. We started out going to the small parade expo. (laughs) The small parade expo. Nice. All right, Chip, would you like to answer one? (laughs) Big money, no whammies. Yeah. Stop. Okay. Did you hold my mic, sir? MDT, this one's for you. If you can open it. You did it. Okay. (coughs) All right, hold the mic up for me. Are you excited for the new Star Wars movie? I didn't get that one. It's because it's your karma. Uh. Am I excited? I'm tentatively excited and kind of afraid. Yeah. Yeah. You kind don't want to love again and then be spurned. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 And I think that's yeah. one of the reasons why they have a much uh, wider range of, you know, area of opportunity because we've already been burned once. Have you Fra- w- frankly, frankly, I've, I've avoided as much of the trailers and the and spoilers. I just want to come in fresh 
you know, one of my favorite childhood memories is like I saw Star Wars in the theater before I could read. My dad had to read the scroll to me. Oh. You know, I love that movie. I, me I remember like going through the newspapers, looking at the movies. And I saw this like tiny Star Wars ad and I cut it out and went, Mom, I want to go see this movie. And uh, I used to read the cartoons in the newspaper. Yeah. Those and I awesome. uh, God, I saw Empire Strikes Back in the theater a bunch. Of, I, I remember I saw Jedi like 10 times. Oh. After oh. I saw, I was young enough that Jedi was the first one I got to see in the theater. Yeah. And afterwards, I, I informed my mom that I wanted to. So you're saying I'm old. I oh, know you're Thanks. just older. Yes. Older. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, you're so among I said, old friends. It's I told okay. my mom I wanted to change my name to Luke Skywalker. Nice. And she was cool with it, but I had to wait until I was older, you know, because it has to be legal. Yeah. And then that obviously gave me enough time to realize that wasn't going to happen. I got to see Return of the Jedi in theaters okay, on opening day. <laughs> My, we tricked our guidance counselor into taking us during school hours. That is quite the trick. Yes. yes. So, so during I was in an AV program with my, so my brother, me, and two other kids, in the middle of the day on Friday, with our teacher, went to go see Empire. I mean, uh, Return of the Jedi, and then we got to lord it over all of our friends when we got home from school. It was awesome. It was We've awesome. already seen it, guys. Sorry, I don't know if you know about this. Yeah. We went for school. We yeah, went yeah. for school. Yeah. It was a school sanctioned trip well thank you guys for talking with us yes and i no hope problem. that you have fun at the show oh and uh yeah let us know uh where online we can find your various oh yeah that's right submit.comixology.com nice excellent and uh, we're going to <laughs>